Life is a very complicated matter. Hmm? It's a surprise to some of them that we are still alive. We are born with the history. It's right or wrong, we have to accept. <laughs> I'm the great-grandson of King Debo, the last king of Burma. We have a duty to do, because that blood is running in our body. You had to crawl on your knees <laughs> to visit us. Princess Margaret, she likes the free life, no? I'm like her. We lost our identity. We live nearly 60 years in the dark days the incredible twists and turns their lives took was, I mean, really stranger than any credible work of fiction. War to an innocent country is something that is dreadful. They've got the guns, they've got the power to hell with the world's opinion. We hope that this will be the beginning of a new era where there will be more emphasis on the role of the people in the everyday politics of our country. My great-grandfather is still entombed here in India. We, the descendants of the last king and queen of Burma, humbly request permission to return the royal remains of King Debo home. If all is completely peace, then his body should come along, but not in this time. Things have changed. People's outlook have changed. Let them lie in peace. So, first of all, may I introduce you to the young man, the young British man. <laughs> who is the filmmaker as well as the owner of the um, grandma's production, Alex Bescobi. <laughs> Next to Alex Bescobi is the great-grandson of King Thibault, Wu Sovin. So Alex, may I ask you first that what inspired you to make this film? Um, well, yeah, thank you. Uh, firstly, just for everyone for coming. Uh, it's a real honor to be uh, in Thailand and showing this film to more and more people. Um, and thank you very much for moderating. <laughs> um, two things, really. One was um, a passion for the history of Myanmar. I studied Myanmar history. Um, I'd come across this story and I was amazed about that how few people in my own country knew the history of Myanmar. Um, and as we got more into this film and we started showing it, I was amazed at how few people, I think, in Myanmar and, and the, the neighboring countries knew about this story. Uh, so I'd sort of made it for Brits and it actually has resonated more <laughs> both in here in Myanmar and, and, and surrounding countries. I think the second thing that motivated me to make this film was meeting Uso Win and his family. Um, I'd had planned to do something a lot more boring uh, in writing a book about British history of Myanmar, and then I met this family, and as you've seen, they are absolutely fascinating, and also just wonderful human beings. So it was ultimately meeting Uso Win quite by chance that I decided to make this film. Um. One more question for uh, Alex, that why, uh, what do you uh, imply for the title of the documentary as We Were Kings? <laughs> well, one is, I guess it's a statement of fact. Um, but a, a big theme of this film is about memory. And in a, in a country that for many years discussion of the past was discouraged um, and access to information about the past was not given to the population. Um, what we're trying to do in a small way with this film is help um, the people of Myanmar to relearn and rediscover their own history. 
And a part, one of the most enjoyable parts of this uh, whole project has been to spend time with Iso Win, travel the world together, and together to discover the story of his past, uh, which is incredible. You know, they're no ordinary family. So there is, the, We Were Kings has a sense of nostalgia, sense of loss, but it's about memory and the right to remember that people now in a, in a more free time uh, where discussion of the past is freer have a right to explore their own past and, and remember it. Thank you, Alex. So now we turn to Tam Usawin. Um, could you please uh, inform us about your former career and your present career, please? Thank you. And welcome everybody. And it's my great honor to be here to meet you all. Thank you. Uh, I worked in foreign ministry before and after uh, retirement I worked with Football Federation, also quite exciting. So since 1972, I joined Foreign Service. Then I served before in Hong Kong and as at our Myanmar Consulate General between 1980 to 83, then in Washington DC between 87 to 91, and then in Beijing, China, and then my last posting was in uh, Tokyo, Japan, and I retired in 2009, and after my retirement, I was called to Football Federation to head international department. At that time, I had head of international department. But maybe by chance, I had to manage under-19 team to qualify for the World Cup, 20, U20, under-20 World Cup in New Zealand. So that was a very exciting. You see this, just a short, that was in Slovenia while we are in training and my friends from London visited us. But I have, we had an agreement. Before that we are being documenting, during, then, then I told Alex and Max, okay, you can join our group. Of course, that's a football training group. You can join us. But don't mention about my background. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> See, because I was very, uh, 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 I think, uh, made, not, not secret, but I just want to keep it by myself. So when they came, they just took the documentary. So not, uh, nobody knows that I'm, they, are talk, they are documenting uh, my, uh, our royal family. So, but that's it. And then, see, first we started in 2014 with Burma's Lost Royals. Then later they found us like not only our family, because there are many families all scattered around the whole country. And we try to manage as much as we can to, on the occasion that we have seen in the documentary flame to hold the religious uh, uh, ceremonies. Then I think they realize this more wider sense to make a title as a We Were Kings. That's, that's it. The other question is, um, why do you plan, uh, Suin, that um, to bring back the remain of, the, of King Thibault to Burma in this government? Do you believe in uh, well, this election government or do you trust on Aung San Suu Kyi or why? It's very natural. It was very natural, not because of my great grandfather was, was the last king, or, but as a human being. Because you, so, you just, as a human being, this uh, very, I think, the, when they were exiled, the king was only 27. When they were 
under the throne, king was only 20 and the queen was 19 years old. And when they were exiled in 1885, these two, only two daughters, uh, two daughter, first princess, only five years old. And the second princess was only three years old. And the third princess was in a uh, queen's uh, womb in, in a pregnancy, heavy pregnancy and was born when they arrived in India in Madras. And my grandmother, the fourth princess, was born in Ratnagiri. So they were four. So I think very, from the very beginning, they have been forced to leave the country. They do not want to. And they have been told that just for a very short uh, negotiations, and then they will come back. Uh, th these all sort of, I think, uh, untruthful, I think, um, arrangements being done. So from the very beginning, they don't want to go. And all, at the same time, all the time, they want to go back home, looking the Arabian Sea where they were being brought to, where they arrived from the shores of the Arabian Sea. And they just, it's very natural to see the place where they arrive. And this is the place that we have to leave. But that's the place of no return that I have mentioned. So in the very humanistic nature, as a human being, not as a descendant, or just a human being. And as a citizen of our country, he's a king and a queen. He's our, see, our, our head of state. So this is very natural that they bring back home. That's one of, but it's not a very uh, simple matter. Because it was, see, from the very beginning, when the king died, the queen wishes to bring back in 1916. So he prepared in a very th uh, th uh, th uh, three, three layers of coffins to put everything to prepare to take it take it back home. But the British do not uh, see uh, permit it. But see, from six, 1916 to 1990, for three years, the the poor old queen fought to bring back her husband's body home. That's the very beginning of the story. And then she was uh, forced to leave. They left her beloved husband, the body in uh, Ratnagiri. So this, you know, this is... Uh, and then in, uh, when the king, when the queen uh, expired in 2000, 1925, there was another also the nationalistic movement to bring back the king's body and the body of the queen sent to the former see, uh, palace, former uh, Manly Palace. That was not realized also, because that was also under British uh, rule during 1925. We didn't gain independence. Then, after independence in 1949 and 50, also there was arrangement that you can see in the film. That was a third. And then, in 2012, we, as a descendants, I requested the not only our government, the Indian government also, on the April 25th send two letters, one to the, our government, one to the Indian government, to request to bring back. So this is the process. And then in 2012, in the parliament, this matter was discussed and was only recorded. So this is the history of, see, so I think this is going to be a never-ending uh, process that I have to follow. If I cannot succeed, next generation will do, because we are the fourth generation. First generation is a king and queen. Second is my grandmother. And also my father's generation, third generation. And, and I'm a fourth generation. So we looking forward to get the assistance from the authorities of our country. And only the one country cannot do. Two countries have to be done. So this is the, the latest uh, situation. Thank you. Would you like to add something? Um, yeah, it's, it's complicated. 
um, I think it's Owen, says that it's a never-ending mission. Um, it's also just made more difficult by the fact that the last king of India is buried in Myanmar. Uh, again, due to the British. Um, so there is a bit of a, a swap needed. Um, so it's not as simple as, as moving one. If you move one, you may have to move another. And the, the last um, emperor of India's situation is even more complicated because uh, the, the, the country that he technically ruled over is now three different countries. Uh, so where would he go home? Um, so it's, it's, it's fiendishly complicated. And I think it, it says a lot about the power of um, a royal body. It's, you know, he's not just any uh, ordinary person. He represents a lot more. Um, in the UK, we just um, discovered the body of a king from 600 years ago who was buried in a car park. Um, and we dug him up. And then there was a, a fight over where he should be reburied, um, whether it was there or in another place or another place. And so, you know, this king was only buried 100 and 130 years ago. So I don't think this is a problem that will be solved very quickly. So I found that it has the conflict between your cows and your relatives. So um, like Topaya, he said that just leave um, the king sleep peacefully in Ratanakiri. But um, yes, uh, the same to the Similar to um, Devi Tansin, she said that, no, brother, yeah, it's not the time. It's not the perfect time to bring back the, body, the remain of uh, the king. But you said it's your duty. Can you explain more about this, Sovin? My duty means not only my personal duty as a citizen, because the majority wishes to bring back home. So that's, that's one of the reasons. And another thing is, there are many, uh, there are three differences. But if we, if you uh, think, uh, analyze it, there's only two, yes or no. We are yes, and my uncle is no. But majority will be yes. So this is the reason. So you know, but I mentioned in, a, see, that I don't know what democracy is. But, you know, that I know very much about democracy. That's why I said to her that I do not, I do not know about. That's because uh, you have to accept the majority's opinion. So I asked many people. I think I never met one who said no. Only, no, no, no. It's, it is a, it's a very uh, thing, a natural, it's a human beings. But sometimes they want to see, make some kind of a, a different opinion or different ideas. But I understand what my uncle said, let, it, let them lie in peace. It's quite natural because he's already now about ni nearly uh, 95 already. So comparing with himself, I think he just want to see, uh, keep it uh, as, as it is. But as a majority, as a living country, because there's going to be a generation and generations to have to be coming, we cannot do like that. We have to let the majority decide. Let them, that's why I gave space for the next generation. For my generation, we are the fourth generation. We already done our part. For the next generation, they will decide. So this is my uh, uh, understanding. And um, well, um, actually, yes. Th last night I went to uh, you know, um, watch the film also. So you mentioned that around 99 percent of the uh, Burmese people want to bring back the remain of the king. How did you know that? And uh, is there only uh, the people in the upper Burma? Or because at the same time, you said that um, the historical, I mean, the history of the King Tibor also deleted 
uh, it's not say much in the well in Myanmar, in Myanmar. But at the same time, you said that um, uh, the people would like to bring back um, um, the remain of the king. Can you explain more about this, please? What I've explained already also is quite simple, because the thing is that you see, uh, when I say majority, see, uh, if we go in detail, at that time, our country was already half, half of our country was under British, because they occupied with three wars. In the third war, they occupied the whole country. During my great grandfather's father, the King Mindon's time, uh, they, they only half is uh, uh, being ruled, the other half ruled by the British. So, and then the history was being uh, redirected or like that because when they occupied our country, the then the history, the then the all the news are not fair. So what you have mentioned, see in the see that the last king was a drunken one who had been kicked upon and that kind of cartoon. See, is showing the public that what they are doing the right. They means the, the then British. They call it, we call it the warring British. They want to uh, uh, show that they are right. Because, and then there are many supporters with them that uh, to take, take out the incapable king from the, uh, from the country or like that. So, but now, now is the time means that we are now uh, not restoring. We are now making the history to its original. Because history was n not originally uh, original before. Because being uh, uh, left, left out and then in, in the history it was not uh, taught. And then, so nobody now even, see, even, see, very uh, simple is that. We, the descendants of the last king, there is no descendants of the last king. All were being finished in India. That, uh, many people were thinking of that because they don't know. Now, they realize that we are, because uh, we, we have to thank these two uh, British. Uh, another friend also, the Max Jones, when we met, I told them, they found us. We have to be very grateful. Because we have been see, occupied by the British and then we were almost disappeared. And then I think because of the duty, I think they came back here and found us. And then first they started with the laws, uh, 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 almost lost riots, and then they said we were kings. So I think, so that's, and that now, we, everybody now is coming to interested now. They, because the thing is that we lost our identity. See, this is the very important thing. If the country loses identity, no, useless. So we are now getting back our uh, identity, the uh, values, and then the integrity. That what we are trying to see uh, do as a as, as a historical duty. So that's I think. Thank you, so, in, so now, Sam, I would like to ask Alex, because Alex uh, got the degree in uh, politics and history from Cambridge University. So may I ask that, what is your political agenda in making this uh, documentary? <laughs> wow, I've not had that one before. Um, political agenda, I wouldn't call it a political one, although you can't separate history and politics. Um, they are one and the same thing. Um, my agenda in making it was purely to show this story um, to a wider audience because I thought it was really important for understanding the way that Myanmar is today. And my frustration was that 
Myanmar was often discussed, particularly in, in sort of European media, as if it didn't have a history. It was discussed as this sort of morality play between good and evil, um, with no understanding of how it had come to be the way it was. This a divided country, a militarized country. And in, in Britain, it was most frustrating that almost nobody knew that um, Myanmar was once a colony. Or, you know, that, and particularly that no one knew this story about what had happened to the last king. So my agenda was to hopefully bring about a slightly more informed discussion in the British press about Myanmar and why it was the way it was and what could then be done about it. Um, I mean, the questions I often get uh, from Brits is, oh, well, you're being very nasty to the Brits. We weren't all that bad. Um, my, this is not a film to bash the Brits. It might look like that. It really isn't. I mean, my, my, as I'm, I'm, you know, I'm 30 years old. Um, I am sort of a young man still. Um, you know, I don't really have any connection to the empire, but you can't come to Myanmar and not feel its presence, its ghosts. And I think that's what I wanted to show to a whole new generation, that if you come here, if you come to this part of the world, and you are British, you need to understand that you're stepping in the footsteps of other people, and you're stepping in the expectations of people that live here, they remember the British. I mean, what's amazing about working with um, Sir Wynne's uh, uncles and aunts is that you know, they, they grew up with, with Brits. They were schooled by Brits. They had friends that were Brits. Um, so I can't come here. I come here with baggage. Um, and so my agenda is just to, I guess, explore that for myself, selfishly, but also to show it to others. Thank you, Alex. So now, uh, Sawin, you, you said that to bring back the remain of the king will restore the um, identity of Burma. What do you mean identity here? We have to get approval from Indian authorities to bring back because it is under, because uh, uh, the authorities is also part of it. So this is not the only agenda. We, I have many agendas. When I said identity, values, and integrity is not only concerned with royalties. Royalties is also part of it. Because I've mentioned yesterday also, the blood is inside me. I cannot deny that. So, 100% I'm representing is not the royalties. I'm representing the country, the people. You know, the people means their identity. I have to find, their, find back their lost identity. That's why I'm always saying that <clears throat> I'm going back to the very basic. Basic means, because we sometimes we are looking for the all in the uh, super, super uh, structures and all these things. And infrastructures also have to be looked upon. You have to go to the basic. Basic means to the ground level where uh, development is very low, no electricity, education system, and no edu education is also very limited, and all these. So we have to go through this. So I'm just forming this rural society. Rural society is an open society, not only for the royals. So even among our royal family, we have different views. Some, the most of our royal family members want to be a closed society. I said, no, I will not do that. I'm going to make a royal society, open society. Everybody is welcome. Then they will go to all in the basic areas to start from the scratch, to walk on their own to rely on their selves, to get the confidence, to get back the identity that they have lost, to get more value, and then to upgrade the integrity. So this is my agenda. Yeah. Do you want to add some ideas about the restoration of Burmese identity here, um, Alex? 
I mean, it's, 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 not my, it's not my place to say. I think it's best said at the end um, by Tham Yinu that a central issue that Myanmar has had um, is the question of a, a national identity around a clear sense of what it means to be Myanmar. Um, although the more, you know, since I started making this story as a Brit, you know, our, my own country has been through two earthquakes since we started making this story. We had a referendum uh, about Scotland leaving. We had the uh, European referendum. And it's actually made me think a lot more, you know, the, uh, this question of national identity, what it means to be the member of a country is something that's in constant revision. And I think what, you know, what so saying is that part of what um, our agenda is, is just to give people a sense of their history. Because history is the most important thing when it comes to who you are. And I think you can't even begin to have a discussion at the national level, which Myanmar is trying to do, about with, through peace process or through you know, its elections. What does it mean? What, why, are we a, why are we a nation? Why should we be together? It's something that you have to have the facts of history uh, to be able to have a proper conversation. And, but even then, it's something that can fail. I mean, Britain is constantly having this conversation with itself, and the, the question is never settled. But I think the better you can equip people with facts and information, the, more, the better a conversation you can have. So um, next, because uh, Sudarsha, the author of the book, The King in Exile, said that actually the, well, um, during the depose of the king, actually the um, British authority themselves didn't have the plan well, about, the ex well, about this exile. And then um, now we are talking about the, uh, to bring the remain, uh, you know, the remain of the king back to Burma. So can, uh, do we, well, uh, and not we, you know, yeah. Uh, does it has the plan uh, about this yet? So, well, I would like uh, to have your ideas about um, well, the, um, the post of the king and then the plan to bring, bring back the remain also at present. Alex. Well, it was, it was certainly, as it says in the film, um, they didn't really expect uh, to, to topple the king as quickly. The war lasted two weeks. And there's many reasons why it was so short. So short. Um, it's a longer story. Um, but British policy at that time was to absolutely do not topple kings. Um, kings are much more useful to rule through than having to actually rebuild a political structure through which to rule a colony. Um, so they actually had, had broken their own rules uh, in toppling Thibor. There had been plans that to replace him with one of his relatives, but actually they, they couldn't find the right person to do so. Um, and so when they did take him away, and what So Win said, they, there was a discussion, they would take him away just to have a chat with him in India and then bring him back. And if you read the papers around that time, as Suda has done brilliantly in the book, they were making it up as they went along. They took him to India for a bit, and then they didn't know where to put him. They might take him back to Myanmar, they might take him to this part of India. And they were, you know, sort of these letters going backwards and forwards between Westminster and, um, and India and Burma as to, well, what the hell do we do now? Uh, we've got this man on our hands, um, you know, they didn't want to harm him because that would have caused too much trouble. Um, so they just parked him, really. And every year they renewed his arrest warrant on his birthday, which is, I think, a really kind of slightly cruel thing to do. But so almost every year they were reevaluating what on earth do we do with this man now that we've toppled him? And it was an enormously expensive thing to do for the British government in, in, uh, on Burma to actually decide, okay, we now need to run this province. Um, so they, they, they amalgamated it into India, which was an enormous insult to, to Burma. Um, and then it cost them an enormous amount of money and lives to try and impose their rule on Burma. And it was only really towards, you know, sort of the 20s and 30s that things had settled down. And 10 years later, they were gone. 
Um, you know, and so it was, there was no sort of great grand plan for Burma. It was just, they wanted to topple the king because he was being troublesome. There was lots of pressure from businessmen in the UK. We want him out of the way. Um, and so they did it. And yeah, I think the, the book, if you, it's over there, you should go and buy it. It's sort of a, an expose of a government stretched across the globe trying to play catch up with itself. It's like, oh gosh, we've toppled him, what do we do now? What's your idea on this? So in, it's about the, um, the post and then, uh, well, I should ask Sovin that, what is the plan when, when it's mentioned that the British authority itself doesn't have a plan? And then what's the plan to uh, bring back the uh, remain to Burma? What do you think? You want to know my opinion? Yes, or? yeah, your opinion on this. I have no opinion. Because <laughs> already, very simple one. Why? Why see no plans? Or, because already done. Damage is, damage is already done. Now, my part is getting back what we lost. That, that's why my agenda is go to the very basic means, to the traditional values like human beings, the roots is very important. Because especially in our country, we have many nationalities. We have to respect each and every citizens of our country, their roots, their traditional values. That's what we are missing. That's the reason why we are not getting peace. This is my opinion. I'm not, uh, I'm not involved in any other the uh, uh, official uh, uh, wings or uh, uh, the, uh, groups or like that. But this is my very personal. Very personal means not only as a royal family member, as, as uh, citizens of this of, of our country, and I want to be a very simple uh, uh, citizen, human being. That's why I think whether we can bring it back or I do not, I do not have much interest on this, whether it will uh, yes or no. It is not my problem. My, my agenda, my duty is to do what I have to do. Because I cannot deny my, see, uh, uh, from the see, royal family of the, see, the family uh, see, uh, tree that I cannot deny. That's, what, that's why from the very beginning, I don't want to be a royal. You know, it was very funny. Because when I was very young, I met many of my royal families. Uh, uh, so they have, they have to pay too much, I think. Uh, so I cannot understand why. But because, you know, my father was uh, ambushed when I was only two years in 1948. I do not know my... I never met, I think. So I lost with... Was, from my father's side, is, uh, uh, I got this uh, see, uh, lineage. So, I, so the, the line was lost from the very beginning. But later, my uncle, the Divitanzin's father, see, he, he, he made me, he gave me this duty. Because you know, when I was about to leave for the United States in 1987, July, I think, 2nd, I, was, I left up to on the July 5th. On the uh, July 2nd, he gave me a handwritten of my family line. That was, I'm going to U.S., I might forget my lines. That's why he gave me he gave this uh, see, uh, family tree. Don't forget your roots. Yes. And then he said, this is your duty to, not only for the family, for the country. He, he wrote that and he gave it to me. And he gave me a painting, specially paint, painted of uh, my great grandfather and mother. I have to take that painting to the United States and put in my room not to, and not to forget my 
<laughs> line. So that's what my uncle did, David Dunsin's father. So this, this, is, this is the reason why. Another thing is that in the film, it doesn't mention about the descendant of uh, King Thibault in Ratanakiri. Actually, um, well, it has the grandson, granddaughter, great-grandson and great-granddaughters of princess, the first princess of King Thibault. But why they have been forgotten all the time? Even though uh, one, you know, uh, one of the great grandson, the, the uh, tuk tuk driver, because um, well, it's quite well, for me, it's quite pity that they're living as the poverty in Ratanakiri. I think, yeah. And then um, well, one of the great grandson, the tuk tuk driver, asked me that, um, can I uh, drive tuk tuk to Mandalay from Ratanakiri? That's very hard for me to answer his question. So, Alex, please. Um, yeah, I mean, in, we filmed for three and a half years. Um, and we only managed to, you know, we were only allowed an hour. So we had to leave an awful lot of stories out. One of the most amazing stories and the saddest story is the story of the first daughter of the last king and queen of Myanmar. Um, again, in, I advise you to pick up that book because it goes into great detail. Um, with, with whom she had a child, uh, a daughter called Tutu. Um, and her story is incredibly sad. Um, she ends up uh, being almost rejected both by uh, Myanmar society and Indian society. Um, her husband, well, the man, the man that she had her child with did not marry her. Uh, he married somebody else and she ended up sort of dying alone, um, possibly mentally ill uh, from accounts in a, in a small house by herself in India, shunned by, by everyone. And her daughter, Tutu, sort of had to hide who she was, um, hide that side of her identity so that she could marry um, because she was seen as sort of outside or below the caste system. Um, Tutu went on to have many children and adopt numerous more. And now her descendants live in Ratnagiri and still go to the tomb and pay homage to their ancestors. I mean, that deserves a film all by itself. Um, we did have a wonderful scene, actually, where So Win met his cousins for the first time. It's really emotional. And we had to leave it out purely because it was just a whole other story that I wish I could have shown you. But again, I implore you to buy the book. Uh, it's very good. And let me add a little yet, because I'm also involved. <laughs> because I, I want to know everybody that uh, when I was in Ratnagiri, I felt very sorry for this, this generation. Because my, uh, my, grand, uh, my grand aunt, the first prince, my grand aunt, the sentence are now, I think, more than 100 already. Because I got every name recorded with me. Because I have plans for them, you know. Because we are going to uh, make a trust fund for them. But we have to start from the very scratch in our country, you see. Because, you know, our royal family members are being see, uh, started from the very zero. Because my grandmother, fourth princess, uh, made a memorandum, sent a memorandum to the British government, the then British government. In so that's why we still have uh, 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 connections with the, now our Indian relatives, we can call it, they are now more than 100. We still have a, see, a connections with them. So we have plans and we have talked with uh, Sudarsha to help those who, uh, in, uh, in as much as he can, to, uh, for the education and all these. But it's a very, uh, kind of a, uh, a symp sympathetic way. But I just want to uh, let you, everybody know that we still have uh, sympathy with them. And they are also our, part of our family, although they are already Indians. So we have to care for them also. And if we can share also, we have to share. 
So this is in our agenda also. Thank you very much, Salvin. So, Alex, I found that your documentary, is it the, no, not the first one, but the first one in uh, Burma, have many influences to many things also. First of all, it's provoked uh, people to realize about the history of Burma during the uh, imperial period. Not only in Burma, I think in England also, and in Thailand also quite a lot. It's also influenced to reunite the royal, the members of royal family uh, in um, Burma, you know, to have the Buddhist ceremony together at the Golden Palace. And it's also provoked uh, uh, to the rest of the history of um, King Chibo in Burma. So what do you think on this? Well, I, I can ask the audience. I mean, how many people here knew of this story before tonight? Oh, there you go. I've got a couple there. If you, yeah, if you translate the book, that's not fair. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, 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 that's been a joy, I think, just to give that, um, sort of give it back in a way, give that story back and make it more widely known. Um, because I think it's really important to understand politically and personally. Um, I think bringing the family together, that, that's been an even bigger joy. Um, I mean, we've, we've had an, like a, a kind of unnecessary amount of fun um, making this. And, you know, in Ratnagiri, you were there. One of the nicest um, compliments we had was from the the generation underneath you, your, your children and your, um, your nephews and nieces who said, we didn't know about this. And we came along and they were genuinely moved in Ratnagiri. And they, they now actually speak to each other a lot more. And it sort of you know, brought them together in a way. And that was just lovely. It's something I did not expect it to happen. Um, because it is that shared sense. You, you know, all of us maybe are curious about our ancestors, our grandparents, great-grandparents, where we come from. If you discover that you also, you know, you happen to be part of a royal family, it's something quite interesting. So, we do you want to add something it's about the reunion of uh, your relatives? Uh, but I, I like to uh, many, I like. <laughs> But, but I think for the sake of the time and for the, see, because I like to stop it here, because if you ask questions, I, I, can, I, I can answer the whole night, see. <laughs> really, this is my interest, because I've been very honored to be uh, uh, present at the Foreign Correspondent Club of Thailand last night, and I was very honored and also this time I'm very happy and I like meeting friends, not only friends, like my relatives. Because when I arrived here I saw this gentleman wearing a, a typo and I thought he's Myanmar and then I talked to Myanmar he said no, 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 I, I, he, he, just, he just want to honor this show. That's why he's wearing this Myanmar style. I got this dress also. But I wear it in London, you see. God, it's very, not <laughs> very convenient, you see. Walking with the slipper and all around, and then later I wear shoes with this kind of, then it's not very convenient. See, and that's why yesterday also I tried, then I put it back. This time also I try, but see, uh, I have to ask my friend then, hey, where, how we, we have to take train? We have to take uh, two stops and buy taxi. Okay, and I'll, I'll put it back. <laughs> put my casual clothes on. Because, <laughs> you know, but, you know, but I tried in London, but I cannot try here because this country is very uh, close to our country. They are quite familiar with this dress, but I, I just don't want to go into the train with the uh, with the people looking. <laughs> who is this man wearing? Uh, 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 different uh, so that's why you look great by the way I don't want to I don't want to add any more I have much to say so if you are interested uh, you can 
contact my Facebook or my email. Or I'll be very happy to get contact with you all. So this is my honor to be present here. So I don't want to add any more because maybe, maybe you might be boring, but for me, it's my job. <laughs> So, um, well, my last inquiry is <laughs> because, um, well, I uh, found that um, the fourth princess could act. Actually, she wrote a letter to the British authority at the time to ask the treasure of King Thibault back, and she got the list of those treasure. So can you explain more about this, Alex, first? Um, yeah, I mean, if anyone's been to the British Museum, it's full of other people's stuff. Uh, although, when, you know, not just us, many other countries have, have filled their museums with stuff from other places. We're not alone. Um, the, we had a great adventure, and I'd encourage you... Uh, if you Google who stole Burma's royal ruby, So Win and I did a very, very fun piece on the BBC uh, where we tried to track down the biggest gem that, was, that went missing on the night of the annexation. Uh, and that's a fascinating story. I mean, you know, the crown jewels of Burma were returned by the British government in 1964. Or you, most, you, <laughs> not the crown jewels. Not, sorry, this not is all the, of them. The, Ryan yes. Regalia. Royal Regalia. Not the... <laughs> No, the jewels are still missing. Uh, that's, again, that needs a film all by itself. So, yeah. So, talk about the uh, beetle bowl or some other treasures in uh, the uh, Victoria and Albert uh, Museum and also in some museums. Could you explain more about these treasures? Um, yeah, I, th I said the, there was a lot of, um, on the night, there was a lot of looting uh, of the annexation of the palace. Um, lots of things ended up in private hands, uh, but a big hall, uh, which was called the Royal Regalia, was taken and put in the museum in Kensington in London, where it stayed till 1964, and it was given back to General Ney Wynne. Um, but General Ney Wynne then gave, as a gift from Burma to Britain, two pieces, which now still are in the Victorian Albert Museum in... Uh, in London and it was actually very exciting in September when we went to London together to take So Win to see those things you know they, they were things that were probably handled by his great grandparents they you know touched by his great grand things worn by his great grandparents and they're now you know in a glass box 5,000 miles away shows you kind of the the course of history yeah because um, when I read the book I found that um, King Tibor himself always asking for the his beetle uh, bow, it's maybe, you know, his beloved thing also. Well, the, yeah, I mean, the Brits had a habit of writing everything down, uh, which makes it, it for a historian, it, it's, it's really useful because it's all there in the British Library. Everything is written down. Yeah. Uh, do you want to add some ideas about this, uh, Shuin? <laughs> Especially that, about the uh, uh, ruby. That's why I said I have much more to say, I think. If you can give me this time, I can do this, but I know this, there is a limitation. But very briefly, I will say that. See, uh, when I arrived there, I told them, I'm here to see what you, are, what, what you have shown. I don't want to see what you... I want to see what you do not show me. <laughs> see? Like hidden. Because, you know, the... These people are very systematic, you see. We cannot, from, from, from our part, we have all the lists and everything, but from the receiving side, they have nothing, nothing to show us. No, because like uh, Ruby also, no trace. Like Indians, in, from the Indian side, there's a, a Ruby, uh, sorry, the diamond, Kohino diamond, can see all these. And then the officially the Indian side, like Pakistan, India, they want to take it back and that they said no. They said no means they have, they, there's 
they never believe in returnism. If they return, there will be nothing left in London. <laughs> That's very true. Because when I was there, I saw all these, oh my, we, what we are missing, I saw all these, but not from our country, from other countries. I was looking things from our country. It's not shown there. Maybe too valuable to be shown, I think. But that we cannot follow further because there is no evidence. Like for Indians, they have evidence. The queen herself used in a crown this Kohino diamond. No. She said plainly no. They never believe in returnism. <laughs> Means what we have taken, we will not give it back. So this is the, so this this, this this principle, same principle goes not only to our country, for other countries also which they have occupied. Hey, don't dare say to, like that. You will not get it back. N don't even think of it. So now, Chow, I would like to uh, entertain the floor. So uh, if uh, some of you would like to ask some questions or some suggestions, please. We've only got about five minutes. Uh, uh, so, sorry. Yeah. so we have only five minutes. I would like to ask Mr. Sowin because uh, I have learned that you are great grandson of King T Bone from Thai media. Last year, you uh, present a complaint about the Thai uh, drama, Thai Thai drama. It's like a soap opera about uh, the royal family of Burma, uh, of Myanmar. What do you think about uh, this? Always reproduced in Thailand. I think in my life, I already saw twice. And every time it's getting more aggressive in terms of when they, uh, when the royal family argue to each other. Um, please tell us in sin sincerely say, because we are a neighbor, what do you think and what would you like to tell uh, Thai people? Yeah. Before I answer, I'd like to ask you the same question. See? Yeah. So you have already seen this twice and how you feel it? You feel that it is this story based this story based in our country or you feel like that please answer me very sincerely yeah uh, when I saw it I thought that it it might be like it's too spite it, it spiked up spiked up because actually it can be true mm -hmm. but anyway some of the producer always say that oh it's history but anyway when they get complained they might say that oh we already make it up <laughs> That's very simple, you see, because there's nothing to say from me, because I've already said that it is, I didn't complain, it's not a complaint, complaint is very limited. I, I'm mentioning about the, our two countries, friendship, very important, people's to people's relation, and then government to government relations. See? And you have this monarchy system. And this kind of stories, see, should be uh, respected if it goes to the third country or if there is some, uh, see, uh, if, if, if there is something comes up, but no, no need to say that he is not concerned with this, not concerned with Burma, or is not concerned with the royal family. No, this is no need to answer. And at the same time, no need to get the questions arises. But my uh, understanding, because there is no complaint. Uh, personally, I do not like it, because I just seen only the very part then I know what is. So I, and I asked my Thai friends and they very sincerely told me they know. But that's why I just stopped it there. I even went to the Indian, uh, sorry, to your embassy there. I tried to meet with the ambassador. But, see, uh, 
I know uh, what uh, diplomacy is, what, di what diplomatically say no is. So I just stop it. I do not go further. Because our two countries are very close. Although we may have differences in history, because see, every family, they have fights, see? Even among ourselves. So why looking back, the, see, the, not the good side of the history. Let it, let it be, let it happen. We just, there are, there are two things, forgive and forget. So we are, we all are Buddhists. We can forgive, we can forget. So especially, that's why you asked me, you said, as a descendant, I want to give the message to all of you that we, of course, our two countries' border is more than 100,000 miles, you know, very big border. We should be work together because your country is now become, uh, very much developed. Because in the 50s, I remember, you know, the then Prime Minister of Thailand visited our country in the 50s. So, so your, your country is still uh, starting to... And we have a very good airport in, in Southeast Asia, the best one in the in, in 50s. And then when the, that Prime Minister, I do not know his name, when he came back the, in Bangkok airport, the Thai press asked him, hey, what's, what's the situation in Burma? We have to walk another 30 years like to be like to hit Burma during that time not now is opposite see <laughs> we have to walk another 50 years or maybe to be like this country so this is the history so we have to understand so that's why people's to people's relations now we are now talking and then the government to government relation is another so we like to develop this people's to people's relation if we want to develop there is no question of asking that kind of uh, drama or there, there will be no question. That, uh, uh, sorry that we have a very yeah. <laughs> so maybe another the, occasion. Yeah. Uh, well, just only, yeah. That you know that um, the nationalism nowadays in Myanmar is so high. Um, with all due respect, do you think that uh, the plan to bring uh, the remain of the King Tibor to Myanmar will make the racing tide of nationalism in Myanmar again, or something? I think, yeah, I'll answer it very quickly. I'm really sorry we'd uh, be rushing off. Um, it's a very good question, um, and it always comes up after a screening. Um, the answer is, we don't know, and it's very complicated. Um, you know, I think, is it the right time, as Debbie Tansin says? I don't know, things are very complicated. Um, but you know things are sort of in motion, and history is unfolding. Um, is there ever a right, will there ever be a right time to bring him home? I don't know, and I think that's ultimately a decision for the people of Myanmar, and ultimately a decision for the family. Um, but no, it, it is a good question and something that we've talked about an awful lot. So, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you, everybody. So, uh, well, thank you very much thank for you. your participation and. Um, Thank you very much, Alex and uh, Usovin. So we hope that, well, for your next documentary, we will meet again, maybe thank here. You. So thank you very much and have a good evening. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.